So my girlfriend accused Maine of cheating, but she was the one with a secret affair. So now she's paying the price. I, 24M, have been dating my girlfriend Sarah, 23F, for about a year and a half now. Things were great at first, but lately, she has been getting more and more possessive and jealous. It started small, like her getting upset if I liked another girl's Instagram pics or something else. So I would just reassure her that she was the only one for me, but then it started getting worse. Anytime I would mention a female co-worker or a friend, she would get suspicious and accuse me of cheating or wanting to cheat. I told her several times that she had nothing to worry about, but the accusations kept coming. The final straw was a couple of weeks ago. I'm an accountant and was working on a big project with a co-worker named Lisa. So we were working late at night for several days in a row trying to get this thing done. Since we were working so closely together and for long hours, we decided to start taking lunch breaks together to give our brains a break from the project. The first day Lisa and I went to lunch, it was nice to just talk about non-work stuff for an hour. When I got home that night, I told Sarah about my day, including going to lunch with Lisa. She immediately got angry, accusing me of cheating on her and claiming this was inappropriate. I tried to reassure her again that Lisa was just a co-worker and nothing more but Sarah wouldn't let it go. She said I was forbidden from having lunch with Lisa again. I told her she was being ridiculous and unfair by trying to control who I could or couldn't eat lunch with. She refused to take her words back, insisting that it was disrespectful for me to get lunch with another woman. The next day I went to lunch with Lisa again. I didn't think I should have to get Sarah's permission on who I share a meal with at work. When I got home, Sarah screamed about how I betrayed and disrespected her. I yelled back that she was acting like a crazy, controlling girlfriend. So this turned into a huge fight that ended with Sarah demanding I stop seeing Lisa outside of work hours and me refusing to accept her trying to control my life. Over the next week, the tension kept growing and any little thing would set Sarah off. She was constantly questioning me about Lisa and other women from work. So one night she even drove over to my office after hours to make sure my car was still there and that I wasn't out to dinner with Lisa. I told her this obsessive, paranoid behavior had to stop or we were through. Sarah promised to try to work on her jealousy issues, but a few days later she was right back at it with the accusations and screaming at me about Lisa. So I finally decided I had had enough. I told Sarah I was breaking up with her due to her complete lack of trust in me and repeated disrespectful demands about who I could interact with. She cried and promised she would change, but I said it was too late. I was done. I moved out immediately and have been staying at a buddy's place. But now a few of Sarah's friends and even some in my family are saying yada for how I handled this. They think I should have been more understanding about Sarah's jealousy issues and tried harder to make it work before immediately ending a one-and-a-half-year-old relationship. I will admit the breakup was kind of sudden instead of talking it out more, but I don't think I should have to justify having a work lunch with a co-worker or put up with Sarah's crazy accusations anymore. Ida here for being too harsh and not giving her another chance. Update 1. Wow, I did not expect my last post to blow up like that. Thanks to everyone who commented and gave their judgment on the situation. After reading through the comments and getting an outside perspective, I realize I probably could have handled the actual breakup better instead of just abruptly ending things in the heat of an argument. However, I stand by my decision that Sarah's controlling behavior and jealousy issues had reached a point where I no longer wanted to be in the relationship. Anyway, it's been about six weeks now since Sarah and I broke up. I am still staying with my buddy while I look for a new apartment. Sarah texted me a couple of times in the first week asking to talk, but I ignored her messages. I just didn't see any point in it, but something happened yesterday that I can't stop thinking about. So one of Sarah's close friends, Jen, contacted me and said she needed to discuss something important with me in person. I agreed to meet up with Jen at a coffee shop after I got off work. When we sat down, Jen was acting all nervous and hesitant. Finally, she took a deep breath and told me that the real reason Sarah was acting so jealous recently was because she was the one who was actually cheating on me. Jen said that Sarah had reconnected with an ex-boyfriend, Tyler, on social media a couple of months ago. The two of them started talking more and more and eventually met up and hooked up several times over the last six to eight weeks. So I was absolutely stunned. I never would have imagined Sarah was capable of cheating. Jen said Sarah confessed everything to her the day after we broke up. Sarah claimed she still loved me but got caught up in the excitement of rekindling things with her hot ex. The worst part is that Tyler is the guy Sarah dated right before me. 
They were together for over a year and Sarah has always described him as her first real love. She never fully got over their breakup which happened because Tyler had to move away for grad school. I feel sick thinking about Sarah sleeping with Tyler behind my back all while she was accusing me of cheating with Lisa. No wonder she was so quick to condemn me for having lunch with female co-worker when she was busy with her ex. Of course it all makes sense now. The increased jealousy and possessiveness was Sarah projecting her own guilt. So but she manipulated me into thinking I had done something wrong and rather than confessing she restarted something with her ex. I can't believe Sarah made me feel so terrible when she was betraying me the whole time. So if only I had known the truth right away, I could have dumped her instantly rather than trying to reassure her first. I feel like such an idiot for not realizing something was up these past couple of months. Jen apologized for not telling me sooner but said she wanted to remain loyal to her friend at first. She felt I deserved to know the truth though, especially with Sarah trying to get me back. Jen agreed Sarah's behavior was really unfair, and I had every right to break things off. So this revelation leaves me wondering if I should reach out to Sarah after all, if only to get the full story and closure. Part of me wants to take the high road and not lower to her level. But I also feel used and disrespected and want to tell Sarah exactly what I think of her cheating. My buddy thinks I should text Sarah something like, Jen told me everything. I can't believe you cheated while falsely accusing me of cheating. You're not the person I thought you were and this proves I made the right call to dump you. Don't ever contact me again. That would certainly feel justified, but I don't know if it's the healthiest approach for me moving forward. I would certainly be taking the bait by engaging with Sarah again after ignoring her past messages. Maybe the best revenge is just living well and not allowing Sarah any more space in my head or life. What do you all think? Should I reach out to Sarah and get any lingering thoughts off my chest? Or take the high road and not give her the satisfaction of a response? This revelation changes the context of our breakup significantly. So let me know your advice. Update to hello again everyone. It's been a couple of months since my last update. I moved into my own place and settled into a routine and life has been pretty calm and uneventful. Until I heard from Sarah out of the blue this week. I was absolutely shocked when she called me Tuesday night crying and begging for my help. Through her sobs, Sarah explained that Tyler had stolen money from her and then disappeared. Apparently, right after Sarah and I broke up, Tyler convinced her that they should move in together right away. Sarah agreed and they got an apartment the following month. According to Sarah, at first, things were amazing between them just like in old times. So slowly Tyler started taking advantage of her. He would forget his wallet and have her pay for everything. At the time Sarah didn't think much of it and wanted to be generous since Tyler was her romantic partner. However, Tyler's financial requests kept getting bigger and bigger. He asked Sarah to pay his half of the rent and utilities for several months in a row because he had lost his job. So then Tyler started asking to borrow large chunks of cash for car repairs, medical bills, and other emergencies. Sarah gave him thousands of dollars over the last couple of months. She drained most of her savings trying to help Tyler out. Sarah admitted she felt hesitant at times, but Tyler always promised to pay her back. He would swear the money was for something important or say he just needed to get through this rough patch. Sarah still felt residual guilt about how things ended between us, so she wanted to do everything she could to make it work with Tyler. Of course, Tyler never paid her back a cent. Everything finally culminated when Sarah got her credit card statement this week. There were two cash advances taken out totaling $5,000 that she did not initiate. When she confronted Tyler, he denied any knowledge and claimed someone must have stolen the card. Sarah was suspicious about the timing and large amounts, so she pressed Tyler harder for the truth. Finally, he broke down and confessed to taking the cash advances from her credit card without permission. Even worse, the money wasn't for an emergency but rather Tyler's gambling debt. He'd apparently gotten heavily into sports betting and owed some dangerous people. Sarah was outraged and immediately kicked Tyler out. But the next day she found that Tyler had cleaned out their joint checking account, nearly $2,000 more gone. He clearly proactively drained the account knowing Sarah would end to make matters worse. Right after clearing out the money, Tyler blocked Sarah on all platforms and disappeared. So none of their mutual friends have heard from him or know where he is either. Sarah is terrified Tyler stole thousands more from her and is now on the run to avoid repaying. And so that's why Sarah was calling me desperate for advice or help dealing with the police and trying to get her money back. So I'll admit that I wanted to hang up on her or say that she deserved it. But I stayed on the phone and tried to give Sarah some practical tips to come out of this I told her to contact her banks 
and report the unauthorized cash advances so they don't continue growing interest. I said she should also alert the police about the theft and see if they have any options for tracking Tyler down. So beyond that, I recommended Sarah look into ways to lock down her credit and account so Tyler can't continue taking advantage. So by the end of the call, Sarah was very grateful for my willingness to help after how terribly she treated me. So I reiterated that I have no interest in getting back together. But she's clearly in a scary situation, so I couldn't bring myself to completely abandon her either. Sarah apologized again for everything between us and swore she never expected Tyler to pull something like this. I have mixed feelings now about Sarah reaching out to me. I am relieved I could provide some practical guidance for dealing with the aftermath of Tyler's betrayal. It confirms I am making healthier choices, but part of me worries I'm enabling Sarah's poor decisions by offering support. My buddy thinks I should continue limiting contact and let Sarah figure this out on her own. He says I've already spent too much time and energy on her drama, but other friends say I did the right thing helping Sarah in a crisis and that I shouldn't let bitterness prevent me from being kind. What do you all think? Was I a sucker for becoming Sarah's shoulder to cry on? Should I further limit contact again or maintain respect if she needs additional help? I thought I had moved on, but this pulled out all sorts of old feelings and self-doubt. Any insight is appreciated. Now on to the next story. Story 2. Leaving three-year-old daughter behind because I failed in life and just got the news that I'm dying. As the title says, last week I got the news that I am dying from lung cancer from my doctor. Turns out smoking since I was 15 and then upping it to three packs each day a few years ago was a bad idea. Stupid I know. I thought it wouldn't come so soon though. It's stage four and as of now I have months to live. Please don't feel bad for me. I've done nothing good in life except have my daughter to really be sad about losing me. I have no family because I grew up in the foster system and aged out at 18. So my daughter's father is in prison for serious crimes that even if he got out he wouldn't be allowed to be in her life. My daughter is only three. We don't live in a good area and when I go to work I have to leave her with an elderly neighbor that always gets her name wrong every day. I don't want her to grow up like I did in that foster care system. I feel like it's the reason why I messed up and did nothing good with my life. Yeah, I know it's not the only reason and my own stupidity caused most of my issues, but if I just had some family or a support system to keep me in check it could have been better. I just want to give her some chance to have a better shot than I did. The thing is I do have an idea for who could take care of her. One of my closest friends is a co-worker at my job, and she's amazing. While I'm at the bottom of the job, like if they need to lay off people I would definitely be the first to go, she's their prized worker and makes serious bank. She has a good husband and a kid. I want to ask her if she would be okay with adopting my little girl once I'm gone. But I know it won't go well. The thing is, my co-worker and her family are black, and me and my daughter are white. Like we both have blue eyes and can't tan white. There is no way I can ask my friend to adopt my daughter and force her to deal with those kind of issues in adoption like that will bring to her family. But then that just leaves my little girl to grow up like I did in a shitty system with only a will of about a thousand dollars to help her, and a necklace my mother had that I'm going to give her. I don't know if I should bite the bullet and ask my close friend if she is willing to take my daughter, or just suck it up and try to work as hard as I can to get as much money into my will for my girl. But either way, I failed as a mother. And that is a regret I am literally taking to my grave. Edit, okay, I reached out to her, and we were able to set up a place to meet. It's some simple cheap bakery you can eat inside. I'm going to ask her if she can adopt my daughter. That way if she says no I can have more time to go to an adoption agency near us. Thank you for the support everyone. Update 1. Alright I'm back now. A day after my post I was able to meet up with my friend slash co-worker. And after telling her about my diagnosis, which is something I haven't told anyone at work, I asked her if she was willing to adopt my little girl. She was shocked and tried to comfort me about my upcoming death, but she told me she couldn't give me her answer right then and there. Turns out, she does want a daughter, but something happened in her second pregnancy and caused her issues I don't feel right sharing. So she does want to consider adopting, but she first needed to talk to her husband and talk about planning if he agrees. I understood since it was a big change in their family. I said okay and after we ate she gave me a hug and told me she will miss me. This is embarrassing but I actually started crying. I also started making the emails, you slash Bundis playbook gave me this idea and I thought it was amazing. 
so I created an email for my daughter and started pre-recording videos for stuff. It's nowhere near ready, but I already have some ideas and recorded some videos for her birthdays and some big life events like first crushes and prom and first job. Sad to say, but I realized planning it that most of the videos will be don't do what I did. My friend reached out to me a few days ago and said that after having a long talk with her, they both are considering it. Apparently, they do this thing where after talking about a huge change in their lives, they'll come to something to agree on and then wait for a while. And if they're still on the same page, then it sounds like a good idea. She did tell me that it wasn't a yes, though. There are some issues they want to fix first. She said that while they both really like the idea, they barely know anything about my little girl. Her husband and six-year-old son haven't even seen her, and while she has seen and heard about her, it's for me. So she told me about a plan they came up with. For the rest of this month, I'm going to have to get up two hours earlier than normal to drop off my daughter at their house so her husband can watch over her as he works at home. Then I'll go to work with my co-worker. This way her husband and son can get to know her. She also said she wants us to celebrate Christmas with them, so that's something to look forward to in the future. And I've already done it yesterday, and when I went to go pick up my little girl, she was the happiest I've ever seen her in a long time. So my friend's husband said that they went off on the wrong foot in the start. He said she was really scared sometimes and didn't want to play with their son yet, but since it was their first day, he thinks she'll get better. So we did it again today, and he said she mostly watched their son play, but it was already better than yesterday. So that's what's happening right now. I'm scared this will be for nothing, but at the very least, now my daughter is getting better at their house for now. So even if they say no in the end, she already has some better memories than when she was with me. Comments where OP has replied, Lou underscore Ava, sending you so much love, sweetheart. I hope you're able to enjoy your little girl and find peace knowing she'll be with a loving family. And even if it ends up not working out, you did and are doing your best to provide her the best possible future. Just a recommendation with the email, get a backup or backups for the videos. Be it a CD, USB, online backup or others. I have an email I use to receive only, and it goes directly to my mail app on iPhone, so I don't directly log into the account on Gmail. Well, I got an email some time ago that since there's been no activity on the email for a few years, that the account would be closed in a few months. So I just sent myself a few emails, but it may happen. So please get a backup, because she'll definitely appreciate it. T, thank you. I'll try to do backups in any videos. I think if my friend says yes after all of this, I'll tell her about email deletion, so she could help stop that from happening. That does scare me is doing all of the emails and having them lost before she can see them. Dark Recess, I know I'm only a n internet stranger, but as a mom, I'm proud of you. You don't have much, but everything you do have is focused on your baby girl, and that's what makes a great mom. One thing I will say to add to the email idea, if you can, grab some loose sheets of paper or a small notebook and write down your favorite recipes, including all the things you add that make it something only you've made. Give that to her because one day she'll be happy to say, I made my mom's food. Write down little happy things you come across in the time you have left, not in email form but in your own handwriting, because she'll treasure that in years to come and it's a tangible link to you. Write down places you like to go, favorite color, favorite music, things like that. So little pieces of you so she'll have something to physically hold on to when times get hard. You have all my love. OP, I was thinking of writing a letter for my little girl's 13th birthday. The only thing I have from my mom is this necklace that has been with me. I don't know what it is, but it has a lot of curls and hoops with a pretty almost clear stone in the middle. I was going to write a letter explaining the necklace is from her grandmother and now since she would be old enough it's going to be hers. I do have recipes I know she loves that would be an amazing idea. She loves my egg salad sandwiches so that's one recipe I'll write down. Thank you for the idea. Update 2 My friend gave me her family's decision and I also lost my job. January 20th, 2024 I'm back again. I'm sorry for being gone so long a lot has happened and this will be my last post. So this is going to be long sorry. First, I started feeling real sick days after Christmas. My whole chest was hurting like someone was hitting it with a hammer over and over, and I was coughing up blood. My best friend was terrified that I cut something, because the doctors have said that me getting sick right now could be deadly, so we had to go to the doctor. Thankfully I didn't get anything. It was the symptoms getting worse. Also, thankfully at the time I was still at work, so I didn't have to pay much for the bills. Yeah, that was another terrible thing that happened to me recently. 
After that trip to the hospital, my work called me in privately. Remember how I said that if something were to happen, I would be the first to go. Guess what? Sabasas were telling me how they couldn't keep me there as I'm dying because it wouldn't feel right and how it's apparent to them my illness was slowing me down and forcing my co-workers to work harder to make up for me wouldn't be fair and all that. I know I was just causing more problems to my co-workers since I got diagnosed, but I didn't think they would complain about me to my bosses. I'm so stupid for that. Of course I was being a pain. I was hoping to still be with them to the end of the month so I could pay my apartment rent. And I had barely enough money for bills, rent, groceries, public transport, and hospital bills. So this is where my best friend slash former co-worker comes in. After testing out caring for my little girl for a few weeks and spending a big holiday with them, she and her husband agreed to adopt her. She was telling me about some of her plans and I told her it would probably be for the best that my daughter moves in with them. She asked me why and I told her our work fired me and I wouldn't be able to care for both of us with so little money. She told me we both could move in with them, they have plenty of guest rooms I could pick. Swear I tried to say no, her family was already doing so much for us I felt like this was too much. She told me I could be a huge help for them living there during my last months. Her husband could use the help looking after her as he works. I can help them decorate and fix up her new room, show them the foods my daughter likes to eat. So I promise I'm not going to be a bother to them, and we are hard at work getting the needed papers to get her for the adoption after I'm gone. Suffides, me living there could help my little girl become more comfortable in her new home. And guess how rich her family are. They have a personal family lawyer. When I haven't been feeling sick, we've been working with him to make sure the adoption goes through. Okay, after all of that I do want to share some other fun news. Christmas with them was probably the best Christmas my daughter and even I've ever had our entire lives. My friend's family had like five Christmas trees in their entire house. Thanks to my friend I was able to make a really special Christmas gift for my daughter, a Build-A-Bear. So well it was really a bunny but still. So I made a voice recording telling her how much I love and will always try to keep her safe. And my friend knows about the emails. I'm almost done with them actually, just a few more left. I gave her the password to both the email and this Reddit account so once I pass she could delete this one. Sorry, but I've been so much messages I don't want people to message me when I'm gone. And about the messages, I've gotten a lot since I updated. Apparently my story was shared on TikTok, that's cool. It's weird I've gotten so many people reaching out to me and messaging me wanting to talk. I've never had that happen in my life, it's funny how it happens once I'm dying. Con saying how if my friend said no they would love to adopt my little girl. Thank you, but thankfully my friend did say yes. But if you still want to adopt, please reach out to a foster care system in your state. There are still children struggling in the system going through what I did. Give those kids the life I could never have. I've also had some saying how they would love to pay me money to help. Please don't bother. Sorry, but it feels weird accepting money. My whole life I've worked for everything I've had so it feels wrong accepting money and help from strangers just because I'm dying. I do want to address a few messages I've gotten about race. Most were about why I cared about my friend's family and me and my daughter's race being different. It wasn't a lot, but a few called me a racist for caring about that. I want to say that my nerves about that isn't, because I think me and my daughter being white makes us better than my friend. Far from it. I've seen a lot of stuff in the system and talked with other kids of different races. And those kids of different races were put into care with people who were also a different race from them. They would tell me the problems they faced from the parents, not that I'm scared my friend will do that, but also from the outside world. Dean called names and insulted. One kid told me how she got screamed at by some older lady at a restaurant, and the parents did try to get involved, and it got into a nasty fight. So yeah, I was scared her family and my daughter would face the same bigotry the kids I knew from before faced. So but I can't let my fears about some bigots ruin my daughter's chances. Anyways, this will be the last time I'm going to probably post on here. I don't want to waste my last days. I've thought about taking up painting again, actually. I used to paint when I was in high school before I was dropped out, and once in the same school we've read a classic book about a world where books are banned. I don't remember a lot from the story, but I do remember at the ending, when a character said you didn't waste life when you make something to leave behind. That always stuck with me. I want to paint something. Maybe my friend could hang it up or keep it in their attic, but as long as I've left something behind my life wasn't for nothing right. I also need to help my friend's family and my daughter settle into their new lives. Thank you to everyone for your kindness. And goodbye.
Additional information from OP on her other family members not taking her daughter. Her father is in prison for a hopeful very long time, because he did a crime involving children, so even if he got out he would not be allowed around her. So not like I would want him to. My parents are dead, 